don't know if I said that right. But uh, can everybody hear me okay? Oh, I look, I look a fright. Um, so make, I want to make sure things are good with, um, with sound. Because things, you know, God, sometimes, sometimes they're not. Um, so, yeah, what's going on here? Okay. I don't know. I was getting warm. Okay, good. Uh, I was getting warm, and so I draped this ever so fetchingly around my shoulders. But it just looks like I, like I can't dress myself, which, you know, sometimes I can't. Um, Days Toss, I'm so glad you're back. Hey, Quaqua Cat. Quaqua Cat is back too. This is great. So, um, so it's a different time, you know? Uh, it's a different time of day for Tuesday and Thursdays. I mean, it, we used to be this way and then it changed and now it's back and it, it'll change again. And, you know, thank you for like being patient and going with me on this crazy time zone adventure. Um, man, I'm a crack up. You know what? Miss Eleni, I am a crack up. And I, I told Eric last night, I don't think I had told him that there's a cult nerd bingo card, you know, and that one of the things on it. So I hear is, uh, it's a crack up. It's a crack up. Um, okay, good. You put the show on your calendar. So, so thanks days toss. And, um, that's, that's the scoop. Uh, on one of the notes that I have on the quilt nerd content plan is to say that yes, Tuesday and Thursday, uh, for the month of March, happy March 1st, by the way, um, March 1st will be, um, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 AM central usually, or at least in the past few months, it's been an evening show. And when I get back to Chicago, indeed, it will be an evening show once again, um, I think 7 p.m. Central Time or something like that. But um, but I tried last week, man. You know, I tried doing it, the show at 11 p.m. It served no one. <laughs> it did not serve our UK friends. It did not serve me. Uh, I was sort of like, and it didn't serve you know, it didn't really make a huge difference in the States. I don't know. So, so I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I couldn't go to sleep till 3 a.m. And then I couldn't go to sleep at all. I mean, I'm still recovering. I'll, I'll be all right. But, um, but anyway, so, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, so, so this is the, the time on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. Central. And you know what I realized? So I'm making the trailer for the show. Uh, because it's high time I had one, you know, so when people come to the Twitch channel, they can see a brief, like, you know, trailer. I mean, you're supposed to have one, and I haven't had one yet because I try to make it too perfect. And you all remember, I was working on one, and I lost it. I mean, I, I really did. I deleted it. I mean, it's, who knows? It, I can't believe it happened, but it did. So I had to start over, which was okay, because it's way better now. Um... Bonnie. Oh no. Bonnie, can you please send me how to resubscribe? Oh, I saw an email from you in my inbox. I haven't read it yet. I bet it's about that. Um, hmm. Amazon customer support. You know, what's interesting. I didn't even know you could get a person <coughs> on the phone at Amazon at all. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, be, I mean, I'm, I'm not being flipped. Like you were on the phone with customer service and that can be very aggravating. Um, and so they were no help and that's terrible, but I am impressed that you got a person at Amazon. I don't know. I've never tried calling Amazon, but I feel like it's one of those things where I mean, how many steps, you know? So I appreciate that. Um, so Bonnie, yeah. Oh, so demented. If you can help Bonnie, that would be really great. Uh, I think you'll be able to help a little bit better than I will be um, able to help. Uh, thank you, by the way, to my mods. I so appreciate you, um, Kelly and Joyous Fibers and Word and Bird Nerd and everybody else who has a green sword next to their name are uh, mods. And if you if you want to help mod um, moderate uh, on the show, let me know. Um, you can you can do that. It would be great because I've got wonderful moderators. But if People can't be here every show. It really helps to have people who can can do that. And it's really fun. I mean, I love you, first of all. And you get to welcome people, you know, specifically. Uh, we all welcome new people here at, on Quilt Nerd. But, you know, the mods have like, I don't know. They have like a, it's a, it's a special designation. They can, you know, I mean, there's lots of things. They can like give me feedback. I mean, everybody can give me feedback, but like, I don't know. The mods take care of certain things. They can help you out with resubscribing. They're not tech support, but like, you know, they know some stuff. Uh, and they also help keep our chat like safe and, um, you know, free of like icky, ickiness. 
And they do it instead of the Streamlabs program doing it or like a, a bot. A bot can help moderate and did for a long time. It wasn't good. Molly got in trouble a lot and now Molly is a mod. Or she needs to be. Did we get that done, Molly? Anyway, we will. So, but I realized while I was making the trailer that did, yes, it fell into the Swiss cheese zone, as my mom would say. Um, uh, uh, or, or, yeah, so it, I lost it. So I was working on the trailer, and so I was going back through some shows, and I realized that um, I haven't done the thing that I used to do in the beginning of the show, like when we first started, like in late July. Uh, uh, I, I wrote down the thing. It's like late July, like the last day of July or something like that, 2021. And, um, you know, by the way, I, I won't lose my train of thought. I know where I'm going with that. But um, I've been, you know, reading about Twitch and watching YouTubes about Twitch and, you know, getting my ha handle around this platform. And, and for one thing, you know, I could have done all of this on YouTube, but I just didn't want to. I, ju I just, I don't know. I didn't want to. It's the rebel in me. I just was, I was tired of YouTube. It's like, it's like how I have a, a Samsung phone. Like a, I have a Pixel or a Pixel phone. Everyone has an iPhone. I don't like it. I just, I don't like it. I want to, I just have to be different. I just don't want to fall in lockstep. Damn it. So I just, I just can't. Estelle was the worst Molly, a thousand percent. I need to say hi to everybody, but let me get this out. Um, <laughs> So I just, I don't know. I just don't want an iPhone and I, I don't want to be on YouTube for this show. Hey, Bonnie. Oh, Bonnie. Oh my God. <laughs> Molly, uh, uh, someone helped. Someone helped. So thank you for helping. Um, so Demented helped, I think. Bonnie, you, you did it. This is great. Let's see. What can we do? What can we do? I mean, maybe. We don't use Dusty too often. A little Dusty Springfield, son of a preacher man. The show was called Quilt Church for a while, and that's why Dusty hangs around. Um, that is beautiful, Bonnie. I'm so glad. Amazon customer service, out. Quilt nerd chat box in. Um, anyway, so so I have to be a rebel. So so I'm learning about Twitch, and and one of the um, one of the videos I watched said it takes two years, two years on the platform to really like start like hitting your stride. And and that was interesting because I feel like. Hey, Black Web Diva. Oh my God, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate you. And I think, I think you were gifted a sub from Days Haas. Dave Toss. oh no, no, Days Haas gave a, gave a sub to, subscription to Body Kane. Okay, now I'm super confused, but I'm really, really grateful. Black Web Diva, uh, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. Uh, we have a good little thing going here. I like to think so. I mean, people seem to think so. I look like... I don't know. Anyway, so so uh, I realized while I was watching some some Twitch videos, um, I mean, yeah, yeah, that uh, it's supposed to take two years to really build a thing. Um, and also, yeah, trailers are really important. <laughs> so I was watching um, old episodes to get some sound bites and things for the for the channel, for the trailer. And uh, I realized I hadn't done the thing in a while where I explain what the show is. You know, I do the explainer. And, oh yeah, and Black Web Diva, you got welcome baskets in the chat because we like to welcome new people and new subscribers. And I'm glad that you're getting those welcome baskets. And welcome to Quilt Church. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good, yeah. Um, so the show is called Quilt Nerd because uh, we we get pretty nerdy about these things. And what's kind of cool, I mean, you can, it, nerds come in all shapes and sizes and forms and types, genuses, species, what's what genus, species, uh, yeah, all those distinctions, right, for uh, animals and plants. And I don't know, anyway, I'm out of my nerd league on that stuff. I'm not a nerd for science. I'm a nerd for quilts. And, and everybody, you know, finds their thing that they like. And I didn't know I was into these things quite like, I would become later. I grew up around quilts. I, I made a lot of them. I worked in the quilt industry for some time, but uh, but it was a it was some years ago. I, I I don't know. I don't know. Five years ago or something. I think I pulled phylum. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Hey, Joyous and Pen Burrito's here and Bonnie. Oh, well, I said hi to Bonnie. Bonnie, we go way back at this point. Um, Rusty Cat and uh, I'll be saying hi to everybody here soon. So I I looked at I think an old uh, or a book. 
uh, estate documentation project because in the 80s and 90s and 2000s and still today, I learned from the folks at the Quilt Index, there are documentation projects still going on where people, you know, bring their quilts to a central location. I think this is how it's still happening. Regardless of how it's happening, people are, they have an interest in documenting the quilts in their state and in their family. So you have these wonderful books that came out, you know, a lot of them are out of print, but you know, for example, you know, the Nebraska Quilters, you know, book, right? The Nebraska Quilt Documentation Project book came out and maybe it was that one I was looking at, but I, I opened it up and I saw these extraordinary stories and uh, beautiful quilts, gorgeous ones. We did a hype train. What? You'll have a limited time to earn, to earn exclusive emotes. I don't know what that... Oh, no, we're not at a hype train just yet, but we're really close. So we're at 70%. So if somebody subs or cheers or gives a gift sub or something, we'll have a hype train. It's a, it's a thing. I still don't totally know, but it's good. It's good for the channel and it's good for you. So, you know, looking at, at Quill History started to be really interesting to me because it was beautiful and it was... Um, you know, it was like I could explore the whole world by looking at the world through the lens or through the window of a quilt. Those metaphors don't work totally, but you could say a quilt is like a magic carpet. <sighs> I don't like that either. Through history and philosophy and, and politics and, and art. I mean, you know, quilts are so interesting because they take you to people and they take you to, um, you know, history times, times and places in American history and, and world history. Um, they're beautiful. That's a nice bonus. Uh, they're handmade. Days to us. Thank you. Oh, we got up to 80, 81% on the hype train. I should have a hype train sound effect. Um, and so, and so it's really, it's really cool. Pemperito. Oh my God, we did it. That put us over the edge. Hype train. Um, Quagwa Cat, subscribe. This is great. I mean, what do I do now? Uh, yeah. All the sound effects. All of them. Oh my god, I should tell everyone we're having a hype train. Well, now we're on another, we're on another path, 17%. Okay, here's one of my notes for today. Oh, that's a lip liner. That's not gonna work. Uh, this is a pen. Okay. Uh, confirm definition of hype train. I have so much fascinating content for you tonight and, and we're gonna or today and we're gonna we're gonna get to that. So anyway, so that's quilt nerd. I it's not a presentation. I just grab a lot of cool stuff about quilts for you because the thing is I'm always researching for like articles or essays mm -hmm, uh, or introductions to books that may be coming out I don't know yes hmm. uh, and uh, uh, lectures and things like that so I'm always finding amazing stuff and I, I was tired of just waiting until I had a lecture or an essay or something to, sh to share it all so so this is what I do and it's on Twitch because I just, I got, we gotta be different. I, I just, YouTube is not gonna work. Marianne Fonz is subscribed. Marianne Fonz is in the chat. Everybody, everybody. <laughs> Ridiculous. Mom, hello. Okay, I gotta say hi to people because I mean, we can't, you know what? My mom, speaking of my mother, I'm soundboard crazy today. It's fun. Um, Pepperito, so thank you so much for cheering. So um, I, uh, yeah, my mom was like, Mary, the show's great, but you can't say hi to absolutely every person. After a while, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be like, you know, it takes too long. And so, because my mom said, I'm going to say hello to some people and then I'm going to, you know, talk to you during the show, right? So thank you for being in the chat because then I can acknowledge you and say hi. Um, I want, I'm going to say hi to Marianne because who's talking about waffles? What's going on? What's go Susan, Michael, thank you for subscribing. <laughs> thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. Um, Marianne uh, is here in England and uh, I'm so glad that you don't have to stay up until 11 p.m. for the show either today. Um, and well, yeah, waffles because it's it's um, it's Mardi Gras, right? We're 83% to another hype train. I'm just saying, 
we've never had two hype trains completed in this chat or in this show. So just saying, <laughs> mom, you know what? If you gift a subscription to someone, then we'll probably make it. I think you can just click a button. There's a button. Um, the other Mary Kate is here. That's awesome. You're making waffles too. Rusty Cat is here and Kelly's. Hello to you. Miss Eleni and Molly. Yep, Molly's not in trouble tonight, but there's still time. Um, Joyce Fivers and M. Hicks and NDH. Gordon Bernard. Days Toss is like all, I mean, in Quaqua Qua Academy, people are all, you're already in the show. We've seen you on screen. Um, Susanna Makes. Wait a minute. What? You're in, you're in Egypt? Oh, we did it. We did it. Oh. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a crisp. I have the good Thai chili ones today. And I do have a glass of wine because it's been a really strange day and it's technically okay for me to have one, but let's just take one thing at a time. Um, you're in Egypt. You're in Egypt. That's incredible. Um, I mean, tell us more if you want to tell us more and you're traveling. And so, so you could say that like, we're all in Egypt right now. That's so awesome. Will and Pearls just subscribed. I, tonight is the, I mean, tonight is like the night. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you, Will and Pearls. I really like your name. Very good names. Everyone has very good names. And Beastly Richard, good heavenly days. It's getting crazy in here. <laughs> The subscription police are going to come and give everyone a cookie. That's what's going to happen. Uh, so anyway, Dee Marie, thank you so much for helping out with subscription stuff. That's awesome. And Jay Dancer is helping out too. Oh, okay, Mom, I find I see your I see your thing. Um, your hello. Estelle is still lurking. She got your first greeting today. Is that right, Fiendor? Hmm, interesting. Good to know. Check. Estelle. And if you're new here, Estelle Witherspoon was for a time. She was banned though. I banned her. Estelle Witherspoon was our mod. She was our bot mod for a while before my brilliant and beautiful mods stepped up to help out. Hey, so on positive threads. Um, <laughs> you, sw you, you freaked out your son when you started using Twitch lingo. It was hilarious. Indeed. Indeed, it is hilarious. So, um, yeah, Estelle Witherspoon was our bot, and bot, and she was too good. I mean, she was she was terrible at it because she she flagged everybody. I remember one of the early earliest shows. Someone, I mean, something got flagged. Bobbin, the word Bobbin got flagged, and and the person who said it couldn't couldn't get her chat shown because because Bobbin was apparently uh, not a good thing. Pen burrito. Thank you for you know cheering. What did I just say that maybe you? You cheered. Anyway, Estelle was banned. Okay, so Estelle Witherspoon, by the way, uh, was a uh, was a person who was very instrumental in the Freedom Quilting Bee in Boykin, Alabama. She was in the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, she was active in the Civil Rights Movement, and she helped run the Freedom Quilting Bee. And she was a force. She was amazing. And everyone should read the book, by the way, The Freedom Quilting Bee by Nancy Callahan. It's very good. And Estelle is... Um, looms large because she she made a lot of things happen and uh one of the people involved in the freedom quilting bee said um if she had things been different she could have run the entire state of alabama <clears throat> and i think she could have so she was a good good name for you know a, a, a um a moderator anyway anyway uh i just approved another comment that was flagged i now it's too late in the chat to go back Nasta quilts is gifting a, a sub to beastly richard okay it's all making sense okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna move the show along how is how is my mother how are you mom i'm so glad you're here this is great um and what's the show about tonight well let me make sure i've done this. so the schedule's updated on twitch on the schedule page 5 p.m during the month of March, 5 p.m. Oh, sorry, sorry. 11 a.m. Central on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's a midday show, you know? It's like Wendy Williams, but very different. I mean, it should be more like Wendy Williams. And then, you know, we'd have like, what if the, what if everyone was subscribing all the time, you know? Like, what if we just got flooded with people and they were all subscribing? It would actually be a problem. Don't let it stop you, but. Um, so, so 
Oh yeah, this is fun. This is really fun. Okay, the show is the show is crazy today. It's really it's really going to be good. So I told you the other day. Oh, I gotta get small. Hang on. Help! Help! I'm small. So I told you the other day that uh, okay, good mom. It's going to reach sixty three degrees in Winterset. That's fantastic. It's very good. So I mentioned the other day that I contacted someone about the logo for making a logo for Quilt Nerd because the subscription stuff because there's two there's three tiers of subscriptions there's 4.99 a month and you get a free subscription as an Amazon Prime member every month Bonnie has had trouble I know people have had trouble figuring out exactly how but but you can subscribe to this show for free actually if you're an Amazon Prime member but it's 4.99 a month or free for the Amazon people uh 9.99 a month or tier 3 is 24.99 a month and I sort of forbid anybody to do that. I mean, no one has. <laughs> no one has tried to do that yet, but not even my mother. Um, but, uh, oh, cool. Wow. We received a level two hype train emote. Everybody can use that strange little thing now in your, in your chat. Um, so, so, but one of the things that's really important for subscription perks is merch. You know, so like the 999 people, like you get a personal postcard from me, which has been really fun, a vintage quilt related postcard, super fun. And my friend in Australia, you will be getting a postcard, don't you fear. Um, and it's an ad free experience and all of these things. But I really want to give those subscribers, you know, merch, but I got to have a logo. We have to have a logo before we have merchandise. It's just got to be that way. So um hey Rhonda Canoodles here this is great so I contacted somebody about the logo design and it's someone I worked with at the newspaper at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and he's so talented um and I worked with another one of my friends there uh on Quilt Folk the um issue the Illinois issue I think uh, anyway anyway so I told him and we have a meeting set up so he got back to me right away we have a meeting set up for later this month when he's available. And I wanted to tell you what I've been thinking about. So these are some of the images that I sent to him. Yeah, I think it's a pug. I don't know, Pam, but it's cute. So I'm thinking, you all, of a, the logo being some kind of reference or having a reference to like a Girl Scout patch or a camp patch. Because the thing is with the quilt, I don't know if you've noticed, but like the quilt... Um, the quilt world, like logos are hard actually with quilts because, and this is my theory about it, but I feel like, um, hey Faith, I'm so good afternoon indeed. It's good to see you. Um, it's, uh, so the quilts are hard to incorporate into a logo because they are, I think, to make them really look like quilts, you have to have high contrast. You have to have essentially black and white in the square, right, of, of a quilt icon or something and this makes it very difficult you can't put text over that really you, you know because you can't because it's too high contrast things don't work typefaces and things don't work when you have a background that's a checkerboard essentially anyway this is one of my theories so um all right rusty cat says as a leader of a girl guide group badges slash patches are a must well that's the thing not only do i think the quilt nerd logo should be, you know, referencing or reminiscent of or call to mind a patch of some kind. Maybe we have patches. <laughs> I mean, maybe we have like nerd patches. Maybe, maybe there's like a patch when you, when you order like 20 books from eight books using my affiliate link, of course, you know, may, I don't know. Maybe there's like, maybe there's like a quilt con patch or, you know, something like that. It could be really fun. So these are some images that I sent him. These are all vintage patches. You know, this is a service station patch. Uh, and, and this is just really fun to me. I think it's, I think it's going to be a good place to start a good place to start. Uh, Ooh, Turkey red. Mm, that's a good point. Turkey red. And you know, red is my at my favorite color in small doses. So turkey red for logo, a fine idea. Um, we can have sashes. I know the, the, the possibilities are endless. So, so these were the things that I sent him. Okay. But I need, I need help. I need your advice because, so I was playing around with one of these before I talked to him. <laughs> badges, badges, we know they know stinking badges. 
So, um, so this was just a template on my on Canva, the thing I use to make thumbnails and things. And I thought, well, that'd be kind of neat, you know, to have like Latin, you know, some sort of Latin. And I thought it would be sweet. Um, who's late? Nobody's late. Mary, you're not late. You're right on time. A weird animal. Yes. Harriet, the Harriet aardvark. That's a great idea. And he's, he's so good. He's going to do it. So, so I was looking at uh, Google translate, translating some words that I thought might be fun for our logo. And so here's one of the things. This is just, I'm almost done with this. And then we're going to get to the quilt. Uh, and yeah. But so I put in, in English, you know, I was thinking of words, you know, that might be good for our motto, you know, on our, our, our logo for Quilt Nerd, you know, something that could be, that would just be so, you know, like e pluribus unum, you know, that kind of thing. And so I put in learn, share, quilt, you know, or create in Latin is creo, but creo is kind of weird because that's also like creo, it's like, I believe, like creo que, I, I think that, I think in Spanish creo is I, I think, or something like that. So that was maybe not so good. Ow, ow. Um, so I put in this, <laughs> learn, share, quilt. And what Google gave me was dice, dice participes pelum pilosam, okay? And so then I translated it back into English, and this is what I got. <laughs> Disce participes pelum pilosam translates back into English as learn to share a pillow. So I don't think that that's going to be our Latin. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh my God. I love it. It's very, very silly. Let me, um, let me just pop that up there. You see, learn to share a pillow. Yeah. Uh, in fact, what I can do is yeah, go like that. So I don't think that's good. That, that's not it. Um, it's kind of great though, isn't it? I don't know. We're not doing that. We can't do it. We can't do it. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. So I'll figure out the right Latin. And if somebody else knows, you know, what, what it should be. I mean, quilt is kind of a weird, is kind of a weird word for Latin maybe, right? I mean, colchita is Spanish for quilt, colchita. Um, Anyway, we're working on it. So I have I have a meeting. I'll take a meeting on the 21st when my friend is available. Um, and actually, one more thing, just one more thing about this, because I want you to get excited. And and that's and that's the reason it's so important to tell you is because this merch thing is really important to me. Um, and it's also going to be part of the subscriber package and stuff. Like, you know, 9.99 people every month. You know, you should get like free stuff. You know, you should get like a merch. You should get merch. For subscribing at that level and 4.99 subscribers you get like a coupon for the store and all, and all that stuff but I, I can't do some of that until until it's you know we have a logo so let me just show you the website of this guy he's so he's so talented it's just ridiculous and he says he he follows my instagram we met in grad school remember uh because he loves to know what's going on in the world of quilts so this is good oh well that looks like a quilt right there so look at this guy. He's, he does animation too. Um, and he, he was just one of the most talented designers that look at that animation of that puppy. Oh God, you're seeing this, aren't you? Okay. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, he does animations. He, he can just, you know, he can do anything. I really, really, really like his work. It's clean. It's, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's going to work, man. Let me just show you this. Um, yeah, I think he's our guy. Oh, that's cool. Like two. I didn't even see this. I, I honestly didn't even look at his website because I've looked at it before. And um, and I, I just I just know him. So I was like, well, he's going to be great. But there's like quilt like things. There's quilt like things. OK. OK. So that's that's that. Let's talk about the quilt that is behind me because it's a pretty good one. It's a pretty good one. Um, I don't have a lot, a lot to say about it, but I have questions for you. I have questions to ask. Um, Jade answer, try stitch or sew or fabric might get better Latin results. I think you're absolutely right. That's a fine, a fine idea. Sibby Mac. Hey, Sibby Mac. Carpe quiltum sees the quilt. Carpe quiltum sees the quilt. This is good. Quiltum is nice. 
like quiltum. You got quiltums over there? Quiltum. So this is, um, hey, Threadis. Um, okay, okay, yes. Um, I have to focus on this. Okay, okay, I'm focusing on this. This is a quilt from the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And I, it's a very odd thing what happened with the show today. Like the content today is, is extremely that, extremely that, extremely um, Twilight Zone music because, well, you're going to see. So, so this quilt is at the, um, the, uh, uh, um, <laughs> Philadelphia Museum of Art. And I have questions about it because I'm not sure how it's constructed. And mom, you know, I love, um, I love your, your input here. Uh, yeah. Hey, sewing Karen. I love Carpe Quiltum too. I do. Yeah. I gotta write that down. Carpe Quiltum. Um, this, I, I, I don't know. I just have questions about construction. So it's, it's an, it's a quilt from, um, uh, well, Lanc Lancaster County. So it's, it's an Amish made quilt. It was made around 1875. Um, oh, interesting, Molly. That's very interesting. And the, the maker is the Philadelphia Quilt Museum. I mean, <laughs> the Philadelphia Art Museum describes or, or credits maker unknown. But remember, we recently paid a visit to the Heard Museum of American Indian Art. And... Uh, uh, and I read placards there that said artists, artist once known, artist once known. Mom, I don't think I told you about that. Isn't that cool? Artist once known because the artist was known at one time. So instead of maker unidentified or artist unknown, artist once known. So the artist of this quilt was once known, but today not so much. <laughs> Um, it's cotton plain weave, uh, pieced work, star and flower quilting. Now the flower quilting, I couldn't see too well, but once I read that, um, I did kind of see it. I think you can see it kind of in there, sort of a, a daisy kind of look. Um, Mennonite. Oh, okay. My friend Jonathan is here. That's fantastic. And he says that it's Mennonite, uh, more likely Mennonite than Amish. Can you, J.H. Casanova, can you tell us why? I mean, what, what about it? Um, uh, we'd, I'd love to know that. It's six feet, three inches by six feet, one and a half inches, 191.8, oh, sorry, uh, by 186.7 centimeters. Um, they acquired it in 1994. So my question for this eight point eight pointed star quilt is how you make the stars. It is that is the top star, which looks green, but might've been, might've been another color, but yeah, it probably was, um, some different shade. I imagine it's very, if it's faded red or something, it's very evenly faded. Um, so I'm not sure, but I feel like it's, it would have, might've been something else. Um, I love the color choice too. I do very much. Hey, Mara, Mara Trigstad, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you, it's terrific. Um, thank you so much. This is a really fun, it's really fun. We like it here <laughs> and I hope you like it here too. This is great. Thank you. So uh, it is a huge quilt, it's enormous. So so here's here's the thing, there's a seam in here, okay? You know, the, the, the four diamonds, which are not, even diamonds. They're not uh, symmetrical diamonds. They're slightly different. Uh, I mean, they're shorter on the short end. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm sure there's a word that describes that, and I don't have it in my vocabulary, at least right now. So you have a center seam. So those are pieced together. But I mean, can you see what I'm, what's going on here? Because, oh, Marianne, that's so good. Um, maker once known in Latin, factor semel inotesit. You uh, get the nerd award. Yeah, and we're gonna let it play. It's a longer sound cue, but you you translate it into Latin. So, 
Um, anyway, so what do you all think? I mean, do you, do you, okay, wait, well, Dee Marie says the blue, red, blue looks like it's a modified Y seam as it meets the tan slash green. Yeah, yeah, it does. And you've been doing your Y seams, I happen to know. So you've got it in mind. But I mean, it's just so complicated, basically. If you, I mean, it looks complicated to me. I mean, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You've got three pieces of patchwork that are fitting into two pieces of patchwork you know, like one side of a star. So let's just say this, this, uh, Southeast portion of the star here, you know, that's got to connect to, to these. So you'd make the corner unit first, obviously the blue to red and red to blue. You'd make that unit, I think first, and then attach it, you know, to this, you'd make this first. Anyway, when I look at it, I just, I just get a little bit a, a little bit amazed. Okay, J.H. Casanova says regarding the Mennonite uh, versus Amish distinction. Pattern, colors, material, format, overall more like patterns of non-Amish patterns, ones adopted by Mennonites from non-Mennonites around then. Interesting. Interesting. You get it too. You get the sound effect as well. Very interesting. Um, so... Mom says, Mary Liz and I taught this, oh, and can probably dig up our instructions. We called it Blazing Star. Mom, that's awesome. Well, please do dig up, dig up the uh, instructions. That's really interesting, really interesting. Do you remember, was it paper piece? That's a good question, Marianne, other Marianne. Um, it's just gorgeous. I mean, oh God, it's so, so great. I love it. M. Hicks says those weird angles would have been easier to do when hand stitched. Mm -hmm. The blue, red, blue were stitched first mm -hmm, and then attached to the two green diamonds. Exactly. Um, interesting when, when the Amish uh, exhibit, the Lancaster County quilts were um, exhibited at QuiltCon a couple years ago. I learned from the gal there who works at, I think, I don't know, where does she work? Anyway, she was an expert and very lovely person. She said that um, most of the Amish quilts, at least the Amish ones were machine pieced and hand quilted. So that surprised me, um, but that's true. At least it was true for a lot of the quilts that were there. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, you wanna make a blazing star quilt, Molly? I, I think that everyone should. So if Marianne Fons will supply the pattern to me, I'll post it on the Discord server. Oh, and if you subscribe tonight and you're new, including, well, I'll have it on my list after the show ends, you get access to our Discord server. And the Discord server is really just kind of like an online clubhouse where we chat and we can share pictures and we can hang out when the show isn't on. And it's really fun. So I'll send you a whisper, okay, with, um, with that information um, on how to join the Discord server. Um, although, you know what, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask for help. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ask Kelly. Kelly, will you please send a link to the Discord server to our new friends? And I believe we have two brand new subscribers. And if you don't remember who they are, or you can't find them in the chat, I can take care of it. But I think we have... Maya, she, you just came in, and there was a diva. There was a diva earlier. Anyway, so we'll work it out. I didn't. I didn't ask Kelly about that. I just kind of threw her in there. So anyway, so this. So this is the uh, the quilt, Mom. If you find those instructions, I'll totally post them in the Discord server, and people can make this quilt. And my mom says, just the last thing on on this. Uh, we used it for one of the rows in a row quilt we published. Says Mom. It was a Christmas row quilt. I think, yes, it was paper pieced. Ah, I'll go look right now, but I have to leave at noon my time for the Tuesdays at 12 presentation by the Iowa Quilt Museum. <clears throat> Mom, don't say that. Because maybe maybe other people will say they have to go. No, don't go, don't go. 
okay, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to keep people from going and visiting the Iowa Quilt Museum, which I want you to do, but I'm going to tempt you to stay, uh, because there is some, there's some very interesting content on this show tonight. Hey, Jisso Viv and Liz D. Oh, yeah, the Quilt Nerd Disco. We're calling it the Quilt Nerd Disco. Exactly. Hey, Stephanie Cake. Peace, love puppies. Peace, love puppies. Okay, Kelly can't do it. Kelly can't do it. Oh, yeah, she's on her phone. Okay, no, 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 no problem. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it unless one of the mods wants to volunteer, but you, you needn't. You needn't. We can do this. So one of the things I have to do is talk to mods, <laughs> not on the show, but before the show, about Discord links. Okay. So I'm looking at the Philadelphia Quilt Museum website. Okay. Um, thank you, Kelly. And, and I start, I, I found something really interesting and we're going to get to what that thing is. It's a, it's a piece of glass. Okay. And this is quilt nerd. So, you know, this is all quilt related, but we're not looking at fabric for at least in the next half hour. We're, we're out of fabric zone, man. But I found something in the Philadelphia Quilt Museum, oh, it's the Philadelphia Museum of Art that, um, that really stunned me. Okay. And so then I started looking at, uh, more of more glass, glass, more patchwork sort of glass inspired, uh, pieces, uh, quilt inspired pieces of very expensive glass objects. Um, this, this is, uh, at the Cooper Hewitt museum in 1950. It's a pesato vase. It's called the pesato vase by Fulvio Bianconi. It was made in 1950, 1951. And when I looked in the Cooper Hewitt Museum, I think I was searching for quilt or patchwork and this came up, but what led me there, let me just show you this actually first to show you what, where we're going with this. This is where we're going with this. Okay. This is where we're going to get, we're going to get to this. And this is crazy quilt teapot number 38 by Richard Marquis, like Mar Marquis, you know, uh, Marquis, uh, in 1980. So this is how all of this started to, to take place. Okay. was this teapot came into our lives. Um, and it was very, very interesting. Oh, Karen's quilting. I love that. That's really great. It is amazing faith. I mean, just wait till you see some of this stuff. I mean, I, I, <laughs> So rabbit hole doesn't even begin to describe it. I mean, I started looking at, yeah, yeah. I started looking at all this stuff, but I need to let you know that this teapot is probably like, I don't know, like a full college education at like Harvard, like that's how much it costs, you know, it's really expensive. And this is, I think this is the one in the Philadelphia art museum, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So, oh, I have so much cool stuff to show you. So, so anyway, so I started looking at, um, glassware and things inspired by quilts or, you know, called patchwork something. Hey, Katie, Katie, I'm so glad you subscribed. Um, I, I love blown glass too. Katie, welcome to the quilt nerd, like community. It really is a community. We have a good time here. And I mean, obviously like what if, what if Katie, what if you are into glass and quilts and you're like, <laughs> I, have been, you know, I don't know, your guardian angels were like telling you turn on Twitch today, join Twitch and everything you love will be discussed on this show. So, so here, so then, so I started looking at all this glass. This is by Robin Nix and it's called Extra Large Crazy Quilt Vase. Vase. It's $1,800. Um, this was on a Oh yeah. Yeah. Padma. Sorry. You were, you're right. It was fused glass. That was not blown glass. Totally. I totally uh, misspoke a thousand percent. Um, and, uh, yes, exactly. Fused glass. So this is extra large. What did I call it? Yeah. Crazy quilt vase. It was $1,800, uh, on a, on a, like a auction site or something, you know, first dibs or something like that. Um, and I just think it's so beautiful. I mean, I really, I really like this. I really, really like this. The problem with me looking at these beautiful art sites is I just feel inadequate 
uh, in terms of my income level because I want you know I love to have beautiful things around me but you know then I look at the news and Ukraine and I'm like well what's really important not that you know not a glass face so I have things in perspective don't worry but but when I um, when I see beautiful things like this I think oh wow you know um, okay so there's that and then <laughs> then I found this and this is like if I was um, if I was if I was as wealthy as, you know, I could ever wish to be, or I was like buying, you know, fused glass vases, vases and these kinds of things. I mean, this to me is like the coolest. So it's called the Scheherazade slide patchwork door and it's Italian. No, you know, no surprise. It's this Italian glass maker designer. And it's a sliding door. Wait, is it glass? Yeah, yeah, it's from Glass Italia. Glass Italia was like the manufacturer of this. I'm not sure exactly what it's made of, but I think it's glass and it's definitely called the Scheherazade patchwork sliding door. Okay, yeah. Um, and I have various pictures of this because I'm enjoying imagining myself in a house that has this. <laughs> I know, Stephanie Cake, I'm dead too. It's beautiful. Yes, it's a sliding door, look, look. So it slides, so, okay, so here in this picture, I have many pictures of these because I love them so much. So on this picture, Molly, I think you can see, and everybody can see, like look it up here at the top, at the, the frame, you can see that like this, the right-hand side half of the door, you know, is gonna be sliding back over the, the left-hand side. It, it, I can see it in this picture, you know, like up there. So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, mm, that tastes great. Um, so, yeah, with, with my luck, Molly says, I'd get it and someone would trip and fall through it. 1,000%. That's why we can't have nice things. But we sure want them. Check this out. The pictures get better. So here, so is it glad? I mean... I think, I don't know, I'm not, I, I could look, oh, well, I printed out notes about it, didn't I? Um, Scheherazade slide patchwork, an extension of the Scheherazade collection of doors. Look at this, look, oh God, I want it so badly. <laughs> it's so fabulous. <laughs> um, proposes, okay, so it proposes to the design of interiors, new and surprising design ideas of great decorative appeal. By the way, Piero Lissoni is the designer of these doors. Yes, yes, Word and Bird Nerd, exactly. It's like the Mondrian dresses from the 1960s. Mom uh, texted me a photo of the block diagram for Blazing Star. Now you have to dash, Mom. I love you bunches too. Great, so I have a text of the block diagram for Blazing Star. My phone is off because I wanna keep the internet as fast as possible. And so I don't turn on my phone during the show but I will post it in the Discord as soon as I can. Um, yeah, Padma. Hey, Padma. I don't know if I said hi. Um, your, your kids would throw a ball through it or something. Oh, a thousand percent. Okay. I mean, I would. I don't even toss a ball around. But you know what? Somehow, once I had this installed, I'd be like, you know what? I really want to try to play wiffle ball, you know? And I wouldn't even think about it. I wouldn't even think about the fact that I shouldn't do that. And then I'd like... Well, maybe a wiffle ball wouldn't be a problem anyway. I don't know how to play wiffle ball. The surface of the doors, okay. Sliding or pocket and or with and without jam. Look at this, look at this. With or without jam is divided into rectangular panes available in a wide range of crystal finishes. What does that mean? What does that mean, crystal finishes? Yeah, it's an interior door for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's an interior door. Um, it, rusty Cat, oh my. But he's like totally on point tonight with all these references. It totally reminds me of Pojagi as well. The Korean, South Korean patchwork style. 1000%, I love it. A contemporary reinterpretation of the ancient cathedral windows, so says this Italian company, for an extremely suggestive final effect of lights and colors. The Scheherazade slide patchwork door design. Um, Kelly, Kelly. My husband bought me a Venetian chandelier on our honeymoon. Oh my God, in Italy almost 10 years ago. It's definitely not modern glass. That is very cool. That is very, very cool. He, good job. Good job, Kelly's husband. Very good job. 
Uh, Faith sees her dog crashing through it. <laughs> yes. Mmm, Miss Eleni, Scheherazade was a storyteller indeed, like a story quilt. Oh, very good. I'm, I mean, I think, I think, I think I have to cool it on the soundboard because I don't want it to be annoying, but like, yeah, everyone gets applause. Uh, and there's this one, and then I think the next one, yeah, the next one is the last picture, and it's my favorite picture. But, you know, this is pretty great. I mean, it's pretty great. It's a very interesting way to separate a room but to have, you know, light and air in it. Yeah, I mean, it's just really cool. Those Italians, man, they really, they really do come up with some cool stuff, those Italian designers. So look at this. This is my favorite. Hold on. Oh, come on. Oh, because you know what that is? You know what I think that? I think that's a restaurant. And that's a restaurant that I want to go to a lot. Now, I mean, you might be like, what? That's not a restaurant. But, but, but here's why I think it's a restaurant. First of all, you have these little tables. And remember, remember, why are we looking at this on Quilt Nerd? Because it is called the Scheherazade Patchwork Door. And if it has the word patchwork in it, I'm interested. And you also have to remember that quilts take us everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Do they take us to Italian design for room, modular room uh, situations? Yes, yes, they do. Do we get to look at Italian design and just revel in the beauty of it because we nerd out on quilts? Yes, we do. That's why we're here, you know? If it was just about, like, if it was only about quilt blocks, it might be enough for us, but probably not, okay? We get to go everywhere. So, so I think this is a restaurant because of these tables. But also, look at this over here. What is this bench doing here? Oh, wait. Hold on. I gotta hide. I gotta hide from... No, not you, me. Hang on, video, okay, here, I'm gonna go away. Look at that bench. Look at that bench. COVID secure restaurant, nice one, Viv, totally, totally. Um, and so, yeah, you can have a bench in your in your life. You can have a bench in your house. I, I, I have a bench. But da, 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 that's something different. And, and, you know, if you've ever been to a very, very, very fancy restaurant. You know, you know. Hey, so demented. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, it really is an encouragement. Um, if you've ever been to one of, you know, you know, the kind of restaurants where you save up to go, which can be super fun. You know, if you, I've, I've done it a couple times in my life, like literally a couple. Word and Burner, thanks for subscribing. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you. You know that. Um, this seems like it could be that kind of restaurant, you, you know, where you don't ask for the bill because you don't want to know. You just have planned how much money it's going to be and you've mortgaged, taken out a mortgage on your house. Um, so I think that's, that's kind of the way. Uh, Mother Nature's checking in for a few, a few minutes on her break and I love that. So, so that's, so this is, okay. So I found, so remember, here's how we got here. I was at the Philly Museum of art website, looking at various things. Myra, thank you so much. Everybody's re-upping. Tw uh, Twitch really likes that. When I do a stream and there are many subscriptions, um, it, I don't know. I don't know what it does, but it's, it's good. <laughs> I don't know. It, it makes the analytics happy. I don't know, but it makes me happy too. Thank you. So I'm at the Philly Museum of Art website. I look at that Amish quilt very cool. And then I, you know, search for other quilts at the Philly Museum of Art, and they have many that are very interesting, including a, a number of beautiful Kantha quilts. And all of this is searchable on the Philadelphia Museum of Art website. So you should go hang out. Although you should also know that I started a big folder of quilts in their collection to talk about one day on Quilt Nerd. I mean, obviously, that's what we do here. So you can, you can wait around. But one of the things that they had works by Patrick, sorry, sorry, Richard, Richard Marquis. And I'm going to show you some of this work because it's, it's just extraordinary. I mean, it's really, really interesting. Um, oh, we've got somebody saying, uh, Young Men Lee is a wonderful Bojagi teacher. Oh, I got to write her down. Young Men Lee. And I saw someone say her Instagram is really good. So everyone follow her on Insta Instagram. 
and she made a Bojagi coat. Oh, that's awesome. So, um, and Stephanie, Stephanie too. Stephanie. Okay, you'll have to look at the chat because I, 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 I lost the thing. <clears throat> so here's some more work by Richard Marquis. By the way, that teapot that you just saw was made in 1980. I think I mentioned that. This one was made the year I was born, 1979. And it's so beautiful. It's called checkerboard teapot. But as we'll see, this fellow is very influenced by quilts. And, and, and he specifically references it, you know? Mm. You know what I'd really like right now? Tortellini, you know, after all this Italian glass talk and, you know, I have a little wine over there because today is the day where we have that. Um, some sort of wonderful tortellini, pea, pea, pea and shallot tortellini, perhaps, with some wonderful sauce. Okay, so um, here's some information about Richard Marquis. Richard Marquis has had an extraordinary influence on the development of contemporary studio glass in America and around the world. This is called, by the way, Crazy Quilt Glass Teapot, Form 1, 1979. Marianne. Marianne said, that's not your grandmother's teapot. Mary Kate, if you're out there, you know what you have to do. Um, so, Oh, Millie, how do you, do you say Mil Fiori? Mil, Mil Fiori? But yeah, yeah, and, and so so Kelly's saying that word. How do I say that word? I should know. Mie Fiori? I don't know what the double L does in Italian. I used to know. Um, but that kind of glass has always reminded me of patchwork, and, and Kelly says, I was so glad to find Willane Hams... Hammerstein's uh, quilt books about it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Maybe we'll have time to look that up because there are really wonderful quilts uh, of that kind, indeed. So <clears throat> here's a top, top uh, view. So this Richard Marquis person studied at the University of California at Berkeley during the 1960s. He explored ceramics and was introduced to glass blowing. Unsatisfied by the limited techniques practiced in American, this is the bottom of that teapot, by the way, I thought it was so cool. Um, unsatisfied by the limited techniques he, uh, he practiced in American studio glass at that time, Marquis went to the island of Murano, near Venice, to observe and work with the masters of glass blowing tradition, acknowledged as the best in the world. What I think is so cool is we obviously saw the patchwork motifs, you know, the checkerboard thing. And this is how it looks on the bottom. Like, that's incredible, you know? Yeah, the top and bottom views, Stephanie. So neat, right? Wow. Um, freely sharing his knowledge of the techniques. This is in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. It's this particular. And then it's called, it's called Crazy Quilt Banded Cylinder. And it was made in 1979. Look at those. Look at that. Look at that work. Look at that work. Isn't that... Okay, Marianne says it's Mille Fe... Mille Feori. Mille, like Ed, Edna St. Vincent Mille. Mille Feori. Mille Feori. I have to write it down. Mille Feori. Okay. Um, and so, and so. Freely sharing his knowledge of the techniques he learned in Venice... Marquis has demonstrated and taught throughout the United States, Europe, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. Um, and here, and here, one of the teapots that we've seen, and I don't know which one it was exactly, but one of these teapots uh, comes from the Corning Museum of, this is the bottom of that, that one, the Corning Museum of Glass. And I, I printed out something about the Corning Museum of Glass I don't know that we need to go there, but but there is one, and it's the Corningware people. And they say of one of these teapots that they own, um, during the 1970s, Marquis moved further into Marine, M-U-R-R-I-N-E, which he explored in one of his favorite forms, the teapot. 
He continued to improvise on the teapot. Oh, Molly's been to the Corningware Museum. <laughs> You're so nerdy, Molly. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, 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 he continued to improvise on the teapot form in glass throughout his career. Marquis made teapots inspired by traditional American crazy quilts by checkerboards, and by Venetian pezzato or patchwork vases of the 1950s. Whoa. Although Marquis uses traditional Venetian decorative techniques, his work in glass is never mistaken for Venetian. Hmm. His approach is distinctively American, an American interpretation which distinguishes his glass from that of many artists who work in the Italian style today. So, pretty cool, right? Look at that. Look at that skull. So he's a really big deal. So, he, I mean, he has work in museums all over the world, obviously. And, um, okay, wait a second. So Millet Theory is on the bottom of that glass piece. Let's see, hang on, hang on. This, this one, which one, which one? Which one, Kelly? I think I, I was reading and, and flipping. Uh, but look at the hearts down there. It's just so amazing. You know, there's a, a reality show. Um, Bonnie's gone to the Corning Museum too. I love you people. You're such a museum people, you know? That's why I said, you know, you're nerdy Molly. It's so great. Everybody, you know, you go to the museums and you see the stuff and I love it. Um, and uh, wow. Okay, Bonnie won a vase. You won a raffle at the museum and you... You won a hand-blown, one-of-a-kind glass vase. Amazing. Amazing. Hey, Threadist. We're looking at cool glass stuff. Exactly. Okay, so now it's getting weird. You just, you came back in the perfect moment. Because check this out. This is wild. This is wild. Okay, so this thing, this is Richard Marquis as well. And it's a Sierpinski Murine visual aid that he made in 2007 and it is owned by the Corning Museum of Glass okay the Corning Museum of Glass owns this piece when I saw it I was like well those are triangles that look like patchwork because you know we're conditioned we always look for patterns sometimes things may not have anything to do with patchwork whatsoever but you know we start seeing that anywhere everywhere which is fine so I was looking at this and interested by it. And like I said, it's a, it's a visual aid. That's how they describe it. They describe it as a Sierpinski visual aid. Okay. And I mean, I don't feel like I have to even ask. Some of you know what the Sierpinski triangle is. I did not. I did not, but now I do. And not only, you know, do we look at glass here on the show we learn about math because the Sierpinski triangle is a mathematical thing okay some of you totally not I think most of you do but you know what if you don't know what it is that's fine because I didn't know what it was either but now I wrote notes about it or I copied and pasted information about it so I could tell you and so now I We'll learn with you what it is. The Sierpinski Triangle. Rusty Cat. <laughs> we've hit rush hour in the Rusty Cat household. So I need to dive into bath and bed routine. Brilliant show tonight. I'll catch the rest on the replay. Rusty Cat, I appreciate you. Good luck with bed, bed and bath. Beyond. <laughs> um, I'm glad you could be here. So um, the, yeah, Threadist. Is it like a Fibonacci thing? It is. So, so, well, okay, here's what it is. The Sierpinski triangle um, is a self-similar fractal. It consists of an equilateral triangle with smaller equilateral triangles recursively removed from its remaining area, which is named after the Polish mathematician Wacław Sierpinski. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Sierpinski. Let me spell it for you. Hang on. Hang on. It's, it's kind of weird. Sierpinski. 
Sierpinski triangle, okay? So I'm going to read that again. I mean, I don't totally, you know, it, but it's it's a self-similar fractal, and it kind of makes sense when you look at this, when you look at these things, because, like, look, you know, it starts out, you know, you got this, like, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You start with that white, you know, the white thing up there, white triangle. And then you, then it, you know, you just add more triangles. <laughs> I think that's what I would say to Mr. Sierpinski. Okay, I get it. You just like add more triangles. So, so why are we, you know, why do we care? Well, because I think it looks a little bit like patchwork, obviously. Okay, and then, and then, but then what was so strange about it, you guys, what was so strange about it, Oh, yeah, and this is Marquis, by the way. This is Marquis. Um, there's two two last things about him, and then we're going to go to what's truly Twilight Zone-ish about this show. I, you're unalived. Pem Burrito is unalived. I mean, same, right? Same. <laughs> Stephanie Cake. This is like one of those how many triangles do you see, and you guess 10, and it's actually 730,000%. So this this guy, this is uh, the guy who made all this, and look at this. Look at this. This is his book. Um, the Way of the Artist, Reflections on Creativity and the Life, Home, Art, and Collections of Richard Marquis. This book is $1,000 on eBay. Yeah. I mean, sometimes that gets real weird. Like the eBay, the eBay thing gets real weird and it's like, yeah, that doesn't, that's not how much it costs, you know, or something. But, but sometimes, you know, uh, a book is rare and I don't know. But anyway, this is his book. And here's one of these triangles, these Sierpinski triangles. Okay. Aha, Marianne, once you put that triangle into a triangle, you can always put more triangles in the space between. Is that it? Yes, I think that is it. I think that is it. That makes that makes sense. Okay, okay. So before we do that, this quilt was going to be the intro quilt for tonight. Now, I don't, you, I mean, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know. Like it's, it's too weird to even really believe me, but, but you must, you should, because it's the truth. I found this quilt a while ago and I almost, I don't know, but it's possible one of you put this in the discord or emailed it to me or something. Cause I, I don't know how I found it. I mean, I often don't know how I find all this stuff, but it seemed, but I don't know. I don't know. It's really outside the normal search engine thing. This is a quilt by Elaine Krajenke Ellison, and it's the Serpinski Triangles Math Quilt, and it was made in 1991. Yes, exactly. Stuff gets weirder, okay? I mean... Well, let's see. This is the weird, this is the really weird part. This is weird because, okay, because let, let's just review. I'm in the Philadelphia Museum of Art website, looking at an Amish quilt. I search for more quilts at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and I find Richard Marquis teapots modeled after crazy quilts. Cool. I go and explore Richard Marquis and his fabulous glass stuff. <laughs> Days toss, spoopy indeed. I go and I'm looking at his, his work and he is all about the Serpinski triangle and on my desktop, on my desktop is this picture of a Serpinski triangle quilt, okay? And the reason that it had been hanging out on my desktop for a while is that I didn't, I wasn't convinced that it would be a great background quilt because it's shot at an angle and I was like, eh, I don't know. Like, I think, I think it'll actually kind of be ugh, like, it might make people dizzy and it just won't work. So I didn't do it. My research is a Serpinski triangle. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. It's, it's too good. Actually, it's too good. Uh, Threadist. So, so it's really strange. I mean, it really, really is a very strange coincidence. I mean, glass blowing Serpinski triangles. Quilt. It's crazy, y'all. It's crazy. Here's another example or another picture of this. So this quilt, just so you know, has a pretty interesting story. It's like I said, mathematical quilt from 1991. And I found it somehow 
on the Science Museum Group website. And it's the sciencemuseumgroup.org.uk. sciencemuseumgroup.org.uk. Um, and by the way, uh, what's in the Science Museum Group collection? This is from their website. The Science Museum Group cares for a diverse and internationally significant collection of 7.3 million items from science, technology, engineering, medicine, transport, and media. So it's a website and it has a lot of cool stuff on it, right? And I think, is it just online? I'm not sure. Here, let me, let me do this. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put this in the chat, this link, okay, if you're interested. Um, it looks like the Legend of Zelda, Zelda logo. You know it does. Threadist, I love that you use that emote. It's the Yo Mary Fonz monkey what emote? The little monkey's going, what? So, um, yeah. So, so, the, so, uh, this is, this is the thing. And it says of this quilt, uh, there's not too much about it, but it says, uh, Sierpinski Triangle's mathematical quilt was inspired by Benoit Mandelbrot's work on fractal geometry. It was made by Elaine Krijenke Ellison in 1991. The Sierpinski Triangle challenges our firm belief that if something is real, it is measurable. They should have told us that before. Wacław Sierpinski was a Polish mathematician, particularly known for his work on set theory and topology. In 1915, he described this basic self-similar set, a mathematically generated pattern that has the property that any part is the same as the whole, so it can be reproduced at any magnification or reduction. In 1967, Benoit Mandelbrot, well known for his work on fractals, linked Sierpinski's triangle with the British coastline. The more you magnify it, the longer it becomes. It's quite beautiful. And I've seen Mandelbrot quilts, by the way. We actually looked at some long ago on this show, months ago. But perhaps we will um, look at them again. I mean, it's just nuts. Okay. So this is a Sierpinski triangle, by the way. This is like a diagram. I don't think it's the one on Wikipedia, but it's it's sort of like that. Hey, quilting politic. Um, patch alert idea. Oh my God. If we do, so if you come in uh, after this intro, we're working on the Quilt Nerd logo. So merch can happen. I mean, we need a shot glass. We need pencils, obviously. And, we're, and the planner the paper planner, but that's like a whole thing. Anyway, I've been talking about that, by the way, with someone who could help make it happen. So, but, um, but if we do, and, I, and, and the, the idea is that it would be, it would sort of resemble a patch somehow, not a nicotine patch, SJ Pepper, but, um, but like a pat, almost like a Girl Scout patch or like a vintage camp, camper pant patch, something like that. Maybe it has Latin on it. We don't know. But, um, you know, if that's the logo, then maybe there are patches that you can earn <laughs> on Quilt Nerd. And maybe there's a math patch. I don't know what it even means. Maybe there's like, maybe there's like a, um, the, maybe the math patch is like, if you can answer a quiz, if you can define the Sierpinski triangle and like Mandelbrot, whatever, from the show, like if you can do it from the show, like maybe there's pop quizzes and then you earn your patch. Anyway, so, okay, so check this out. So I found a Sierpinski quilt. Um, I know, it's so cool. So this quilt was made by a woman named Julie Finn. Ooh, enamel pins, that's a good idea. I like this patch idea. And then we can have sashes. You know? All right. Okay. Here's what, oh no. Um, dang it, I missed something. I missed getting something printed. Did I? No, nah, okay, no, it's fine. I know where it is. Um, hmm. sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quilt nerd math for dummies patch? I exactly, exactly. Craft knife, okay. Um, mm -hmm. okay, so this is so the person who made this quilt, 
Her name is Julie Finn, and she wrote a blog post about this quilt um, in 2020. And so, so her blog is called Craft Knife, a, a handmade homeschool and a crafty knife, a crafty life. And this is her website right here. And you know what? And her, she has a, an Etsy store and her Etsy shop is called, um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Pumpkin. I just want to make sure I had all of this. Oh, I didn't print the last page of my notes. That's okay. Cause I have everything that I need right here, but I usually, I like to have things printed out as you know, um, her, her, da, 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 hang on. Okay. Yeah. Pumpkin bear. <clears throat> Pumpkin bear is her Etsy shop and her name is Julie Finn. Okay. So, um, so she wrote, she did like a, a blog post in 2020 in December um, about her DIY rainbow Sierpinski triangle quilt. And she did, it's, it's so great. So here's what she says about it. And she's a really, she's a good writer and she's funny. Um, and, uh, I've got a little bit more about Julie here, um, after this, but she, but here's what she says from her blog. Okay. Okay. Bye mother nature. Oh wait, mother nature. Who's, who's, Somebody's got to leave. Somebody's going. Kenny, hi. Oh yeah, the Penrose. The Penrose. That's what it was it, before. We did. We did, we maybe looked at Mandelbrot, but it was the Penrose quilt that we looked at. Okay, so here is what Julie says about this quilt. It's very entertaining. Quote: I'm probably supposed to tell you that the best thing I've ever made is my children, and don't get me wrong because they're super great. But one, I'm pretty sure they actually made themselves out of nonsense, candy, and pig-headedness. And two, they are not a completed rainbow Sierpinski triangle patchwork quilt. She's great, right? I love this thing. This is back to Julie. It's like the perfect distillation of my most favorite things. I think it's clear that this person needs to be a quilt nerd, by the way. Sorry, that was an aside. Um, it's the perfect distillation uh, of my most favorite things. Colors lined up nice and orderly, sewing, math, and picky little details that it's almost but not quite possible to get absolutely perfect. Molly, if you're in here, I feel like you might like this too. Um, if only I could somehow combine it with reading, cats and hot chocolate, spiked with matcha and Baileys. I'd be gone right now because I've, I'd have reached Nirvana. Oh, and literal Nirvana would be playing for me there too. When you last left me this close to Nirvana, I had completed the beautiful rainbow quilt top. I was pretty pleased with myself for being so far ahead in my homemade Christmas gift game that I complacently did other things for a month. Um, and then she said, you know, I had to get, get back to it. She said, to finish my rainbow Sierpinski triangle quilt, I sewed a half inch sash, wait, a 0.5 inch sash yeah. to the perimeter, added a cotton batting layer, and then backed it with one piece of black Kona cotton. And she says, I love extra white fabric. Um, she's hysterical, right Liz? She's so great. We have to invite her. I mean, we need to like find her and invite her uh, to the show. I added an extra two inches, she says, to the backing fabric on all sides so I could make a back to front binding on the quilt. Uh, fully approved. <laughs> Julie says, I really, really struggled with what thread color to use for quilting. First world problems, am I right? I consulted my teenagers who were sarcastic and unhelpful. Thanks a lot, kids. And with Matt, who was probably helpful, but didn't, but I didn't like anything he said. <laughs> I'm sure that's her husband. I finally decided to stitch in the ditch around every triangle with white thread on the top and black thread on the bobbin. Um, the quilted sash pattern, a literal sash, not sashing. Yeah. Yeah. Susanna makes. Yeah. A literal sash. Um, not sad for, you mean for the, for the patches, for the quilted patches. Okay. Anyway, 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 I think that's what you mean. Okay. So, so here's what she says. So, so, and now, but she's back to Julie. She says, now what I wish I actually had done was to use the black thread on the top and bottom and only stitch in the ditch around the black triangles. The problem is that I don't super love the look of quilting. Gasp, I know. And I always want the lowest profile, least distracting to the patchwork method. It might've worked if I wasn't and she used a bad word, but crossed it out. She said it, it might've worked if I wasn't loose with my matching stitch in the ditch, or sorry, with my stitching in the ditch, but I don't like seeing the white thread breaking up my rainbow triangles. I just, I mean, I love the way she writes and I love how real she is. Like, it's just, 
it's great we have to we must find her um back to julie oh well it's done now and i'd probably be a little sad if i didn't have an excuse to make another entire quilt just to have another go at one small and fiddly detail i think it looks amazing by the way i think we all agree anyway what i actually feel is total love for the pretty quilt that i have accomplished here have some more photos of it so here's some more photos um and i think okay and there's a, a little bit more she says, I am 100% going to make myself one of these now, both as an excuse to make it even more perfect this time and because I want one. And then I'm probably going to list one in my pumpkin bear Etsy shop because I quite enjoyed the challenge of sewing this and wouldn't mind making some more. I think I want to play with different rainbow patterning, patterning to see if I can achieve true rotational symmetry. That's super nerdy. Good job. And I might see if I can come up with a more creative rainbow pattern that than just rotational symmetry as well. Let's take a look at the full quilt again as we end here with this. Um, it's so great, it's so great. Oh my God, Julie, we love it. Um, uh, I also sort of want to buy a coloring book and try to create some of the mathematical patterns in it because if Sierpinski triangles make an awesome quilt, then what else might? And I'm for sure gonna try quilting my next one with black thread on the top and bottom. My new rule of thumb is that whenever I'm debating between black thread or not black thread, I should choose black thread. <laughs> I do too, Pam. Isn't she great? I know. I know. It's so interesting. Okay. Padma has a good question. Well, so, so obviously, you know, one of the things that just, I just, I just wanted to share this with you all because the way we got here was so crazy, but also, um, it's a, this is a great find. This person is, you know, she's funny. She has a blog and this is recent. This is from December, 2020. So she's active. I didn't check the latest post on her blog, but pumpkin bear is her Etsy shop and Julie Finn. I'll read you a little bit about her. Um, her, her bio on Etsy is, is long, um, very detailed. And she just looks like a really interesting person. Um, but I loved, I loved having a quilt blog, you know, someone's just so real. So, so a, a, so happy just really into it, right? I like people who get excited about stuff. You know, that's like what I like because it kind of means you're sort of nerdy, you know, if you get like really excited about something. Um, and you get really excited about that thing all the time. Um, I like that a lot. And then um, I also liked she showed her process on a quilt that she was like, yeah, I would have changed this or, you know, yeah, I'm going to do it differently next time. Um, I, I love that. That's it's so great. And she's going to make it again and it's already awesome, you know? So, so yeah. So Padma says, so she doesn't like, and Padma's just genuinely asking, right? Um, she doesn't like the look of quilting and she's a quilter. Is that common among you guys? I mean, it's an interesting question. Liz says, I can relate. Once I get finished with the beautiful patchwork, I'm afraid to mess it up with the quilting, even though the quilting can enhance it if done well. Yes. Susanna says to Padma, I think it depends on the pattern. Word and bird nerd says sometimes you want the quilting to be the focus and sometimes you want the piecing to stand out. Jane and Sarah, I'm really picky about the actual quilting. It has to tell the same story as the quilt. Oh, I love that. The way you put that. I'm not crazy about the modern trend for close, tighter, uh, straight line quilting. So maybe she could write for quilt folk. That's such a great idea. Oh my God. That's a really good idea. Julie Finn, I gotta make sure I have that note just right. Yeah, that's a great idea. Well, we have to let her know she was like the star of this episode, you know? Um, oh, look at this, what she has in her bio. I write and photograph daily for a variety of outlets, both paid and unpaid. My, my writing has been published in Make and Indiana University Alumni Magazine. I mean, Nosticles, you, 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 you got it. Okay. So anyway, go to her Etsy shop, definitely buy something if you're interested and read her bio. Cause there's just a lot more about her. I feel like she's going to be hanging around soon. I don't know. Um, I would say about the quilting question, I have had a quilt quilted. Uh, I've worked with amazing long armors, amazing. But one time I didn't tell the person, like I didn't give them a lot of direction because 
I don't know. I just trust people to be awesome. And this makes me a really bad manager, actually, <laughs> of like a team. It's just a t I'm terrible at it because I just am like, you've got this. Like, you know what to do. Just do your amazing thing. And people are like, I don't know what you want me to do. Anyway, so it happened once with a quilt. And I love, I mean, the quilt that I made, I loved it. I'll find a picture of it somewhere. I worked so hard on it. It was paper pieced. I really, really, really liked it. And I asked for flowers on it. The flowers were absolutely beautiful, but the quilt was like bright, bright, bright blue. It was a Kona blue that was like as bright as the sky. It was so good. And then I used like some different white, uh, how should I say, some florals. I fussy cut some Brandon Mabley florals and stuff. And I didn't say what thread color I wanted. And this brilliant long armor, you know, chose pink. And it made sense because there was pink in the flowers, a lot of pink in the flowers. But the blue, the blue fabric was a solid blue. And the, the pretty, like, really uh, saturated sort of magenta pink. I mean, it just, it just was wrong. It was wrong. And I'm not saying that she made a bad choice. I just didn't tell her. I didn't say enough about what I thought and what I wanted. I mean, she had done other quilts for me and they were so great. And I was like, oh, this is great. It's like, do your thing, flowers, you know, give me flowers. And I mean, I, I don't want to say the quilt is ruined, like it's not ruined, but it's not what, it's not what I wanted it to be, you know? And I loved that quilt. So, you know, that's how you learn, man. That's how you learn these things. I know, it was so sad. You got to go, Bip. Okay. You got a conference call? Boo. Wait, wait, no. Boo. But we understand. It's the middle of the day. Um, thanks for coming, Bip. We appreciate you very much. Jane and Sir, uh, my long armor is brilliant at choosing quilting colors. He always asks if I want it to be prominent or recede. I've learned a lot from watching him. Oh, it's brilliant. That's really, really, really a good, a good, um, a good tip. Yeah. Do you want it to be prominent or recede? I love it. Myra, Myra, I have something to share. Myra. <laughs> tell us, tell us. Um, there are micro Sharpies to take care of that. Wow. That would be interesting. Well, you know, I ripped the quilting out of a quilt that I hand quilted. I mean, hand quilted. It was so bad. It was the first time I'd ever done anything like that. And it just looked terrible. So I successfully picked out all the quilting and it's like one of my UFOs. I'm going to re-quilt it. Okay. Myra just wanted to share that bad bunny had a concert last night in Portland, Oregon, and he was wearing patchwork quilted pants. So awesome. We are seeing him here in Seattle tonight. We'll look out for those pants. We got to check this out. This is great. Bad bunny is like a very, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to show you guys this picture. Because that's the end of that that section of Quilt Nerd anyway. So this is Bad Bunny and and Myra is going to see him in concert because he is because she is extremely cool. And yes, he does. He has patchwork pants on. They're totally patchwork pants. And they're not made out of an old quilt. They're like, you know, they're very cool pants. I bet they're as expensive as that glass teapot. <laughs> Because, you know, he's like a rock star. Um, this is awesome. This is awesome. Pat, I mean, I just, I, I pulled it up. Thank you for the link, by the way. Have fun at the show. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Days Toss is very jealous that you're seeing him. I am too. I want to go to a show. I want to see a show. All right. So, so to end, to end the, the little exploration we have today, I thought I'd show a few stained glass quilts because that's kind of what started all of this anyway. At least it was glass, you know. And, um, hey, Mary-Kate. Uh, mm. Target has cheater print, patchwork pants. They also have some cute jackets, actually. But depends on how you feel about fast fashion and what your budget can take. I'm a fan. No matter what you do, yeah, I'm a fan. <laughs> So stained glass quilts, when I saw that, well, when I was looking at glass, you know, and then I was looking at those beautiful patchwork doors, the Scheherazade doors, and, um, <laughs> exactly, um, and, uh, then I was like, well, you know, there's stained glass quilts too, 
which are interesting. And so I pulled some, um, yes, word and bird nerd we can. So I pulled uh, some stained glass quilts because I remember that they um, existed. <laughs> And, but I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know if I've ever really been moved by them or if I needed to look at them again. Um, so I thought we would. Has anybody ever made one of these? Have you ever made one of these? Um, hang on. And I don't know. So this is just a, so quiltinspiration.blogspot.com. Uh, I found this image online. It says, you know, three, 30, free, blah, blah, 30 free patterns. I don't know if that's still the case. But I pulled a few, like, stained glass quilts. I mean, they're really interesting. I don't know if it's bias tape that's being used. I'm thinking about Latifa Safir's quilts at QuiltCon. There were so many um, wonderful uh, quilts by Latifa that used, that used um, bias tape. She's very, very good at that. Um, Day's Toss liked the second one, hang on, second one from the left, this one, second one from the left on the top. Yeah, it is, it is cool. It's very cool. It's so modern, it's so modern. Um, and so, so I've seen these before and I, yeah, I don't know if it's, um, bias tape being used or what, but you know, they're interesting. I mean, it makes a lot of sense that one of these you know, that these quilts would exist. And this is an interesting motif. And I don't know what I'm getting at. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I would make one of these, but I think that they, it's, it, it's intelligent design, <laughs> intelligent design, if you will. And, and I found a bunch of them. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and here's what I want to do. I want to try this bias tape thing, you know, because Lativa Severe's quilts are awesome. This has to be what it is, right? the bias tape so but this is a really interesting quilt I mean look at how I mean it really to me I'm gonna zoom out even more it really looks like glass stained glass to me you know um wow faith okay okay so I've got it just a few of these stained glass quilts and then we'll talk about a books um, affiliate link and we're gonna talk about what Pat Sloan's doing with Ukraine that's really cool I mean yeah okay so that's what we'll do um, but this is interesting how she did this. I mean, I think, I think speaking of the quilting, do you see how it's swirly down here? If you look, um, hang on, let me make sure you can see this. If you look like here is a pretty good, you can see the swirls, right? Like up, up in here, up in there. Um, I think that helps make it look like tempered glass or, or, or glass. And it's, she's used prints there printed fabrics, you know, and <laughs> you're welcome. Um, I don't know if I'm fearless. I don't know. I don't think I'm fearless, but sometimes I'm anyway, something like that full of something. Um, and then this, this one is interesting too, because there's a stripe, there's a stripe used here, which also really, I mean, it's really effective. It really looks like glass to me, you know, Faith, maybe you were talking to Padma. <laughs> okay, because I, I don't know why you called me a fearless leader. And if someone, if you don't know, if you've been called a fearless leader, you should probably not, you know, respond. Um, but I think the stripes anyway here are really interesting. And this one's another one that I think, I mean, that like modeled fabric makes it look particularly glassy, which is strange. I mean, you'd think like a print would muddy things up, but it kind of looks like the light is is coming through it in a way, I think. Interesting, interesting. Old glass had lines like that. Yeah, totally, totally. This one, just a couple more. This one is denim. This one is denim. It was uh, on Etsy, I think, yeah. But that's, and uh, the person was talking about a really good use for old denim. I mean, that's like really old denim. That's like 1980s denim, you know? Word and bird nerd, uh, batiks would work well. I think you're right. I think batiks, especially some of those, yeah, like the sort of low contrast ones could really work. This was interesting. These, these are jeans too, or pants, like chinos. Interesting. So, so I wanted to include this one because it's sort of a, um, I mean, it's not going for stained glass really, right? It, this almost looks like mid-century modern or something to me. 
Uh, mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, Liz D. Totally. Totally. Mondrian. Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, exactly. Mondrian. Like the patchwork doors. I mean, I guess it all kind of makes sense, but but it's absolutely right. The way we're ending, right, with the stained glass quilts is it looks exactly like those patchwork doors that I so covet. This one I thought was really interesting too. So kind of a, a britches quilt. This is denim as well. I like that this person has a lot of colored denim in their in their stash, you know, pink, like Jordash. It was like Jordash pink. I love these too. Like I'm kind of like, I'm kind of getting into these now, these stained glass quilts. I think I really like the denim ones and I love that she left the threads really long. Um, is that my last one? Is that the last one I have? Oh, well, I just wanted to tell you that the lovely Jenny Doan has a, it's like the worst small thumbnail ever, but Jenny Doan taught a class on stained glass quilts. So if you're interested, definitely check out Jenny's stuff um, on everything. So yeah, so stained glass, man. Stained glass and blown glass and fused glass and all this stuff. It's just, it's just wild, don't you think? And uh, Sierpinski's and all kinds of, all kinds of stuff, you know? That's what we do here. That's what we do. So yeah, so in our, in our time, I mean, we don't have a time limit, but, but let's chat. Let's chat about a couple things. Um, yes, Sue, so it was leaded glass. Leaded glass. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First of all, let's talk about Ukraine. Let's talk about what Pat Sloan is doing. So Faith Quilt says Pat Sloan, and Pat Sloan, if you don't know um, who that is, she's an author, teacher, designer, uh, a big name in the, in the quilt world for many years. She's way cool. Pat Sloan has been in contact with the president of the Ukraine quilt group. A lot of children are being taken outside the country, even when the parents wait to get processed. She has set up a site through UNICEF that you can help uh, and help these children go to Pat Sloan website to donate. Why don't we check that out right now? Pat Sloan. Love to make quilts. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think actually this. PatSloan.com. Okay, I'm going to pull it up on the screen. Make it small again. Oh, small, small. Um, yeah, okay, here we go. Let's Let's take a look at this. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, oh, I gotta do this. Okay, cool. Um, it's probably pretty early on in her, well, let's see. Hmm. Let me, let me Google it. Um, let me do this. Pat Sloan Ukraine quilt. Hmm. Faith, do you have a link? It doesn't come up right here. I mean, maybe, I don't know, is it her Instagram or something? I feel like, I feel like I'm just doing a bad job searching, but I don't, I don't know. Mmm, mm, mm, hmm. Kelly, we didn't talk about Dale Chihuly modern glasswork. Nice crossover into modern quilts. I think that is a good idea. And um, something else about... I feel like there's another connection with Chihuly. Like, like there might have been. Wait a minute. Wasn't there? Wasn't there like an exhibit of quilts in a Chihuly? I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna write it down. I took a lot of notes tonight on her blog. Okay. Just so Viv, will you grab? Oh no, here, here's the link. Um, and just so Viv, if you see, if you grab a blog. Um, Link too, we could we can look at that. Okay. So this is her Instagram, Pat Sloan. Um, so quilter Pat Sloan is her um her Instagram, quilter Pat Sloan. And she says, Quilters stand with Ukraine pattern fundraiser for Ukraine's children. Pat says, if you're like me, I'm horrified at what's happening as our Ukrainian friends have their country invaded. I want to do more than just read about it. Like you, I want to help. I've been inspired by the work uh, of Maria Nelga and so many others um, 
and what they're doing to help the children. Donation button and pattern download are at my website, make and share. I'm going to do the single version for my door. Go to my website to, website to donate and watch my video at this link. So boom, and I'm gonna put the link in the chat. That was from her Instagram. Okay, free Quilters Stand with Ukraine pattern fundraiser. Okay, cool. So, and she says she was inspired by Maria Nelga of Quilt.studio. So let's just look at her stuff too. Maybe we can do that after this. So it's a free pattern. Oh, there's a lot of ads on this website. Woo. Um, Stars for strength made in the flag colors of Ukraine. So what can you do? Donate $10 or more at UNICEF. So she's going through UNICEF, which is great. And you can download the pattern from her website. So if we go through the link, Quilter Stand for Ukraine, that is awesome. So here's the link there too. Um, donate link. I did a donation last night to Jose Andres. He's that chef who like has dedicated his life to feeding the hungry all around the world, people who are affected by disasters. Um, so I donated to him, to his stuff, but I'll totally do this too. Um, yeah, UNICEF, I mean, so that's UNICEF Australia. Anyway, cool, right? It's really great. It's really, really great. Um, and uh, let's see, let's see. <laughs> Um, Kenny, you should totally make that quilt, the Mondrian. You have to, you must. And post about it on the Discord. And don't worry, if you're new to the subscription land, I'll be sending the Discord link to you after the show. I'll, I'll send you a whisper through Twitch. So it's your, it's your Twitch DM that you need to look at. Um, so, so this Abe books, so, so let's take a look at the, the Abe books, um, affiliate link. Yeah, Dee Marie, you are exactly right. Exactly right. Somebody asked about it. Um, I forget who asked about the eight books thing, but I would love to answer some questions. Okay, here we go. Um, oh, that's good, Marianne. Um, okay, does every book you buy on eight books have to be added to your cart through a separate affiliate link? That's a very good question. Um, so many book you buy on Abe, if you're wanting to buy more than one, have to be added to your cart through a separate affiliate link. I think the answer is yes. I do think the answer is yes. Um, and so the thing is, it's really easy for me to make those links now that I know how to do it. So there's a book list, right? Is there's a, a, a book list that someone, some kind, awesome person has going, right? If I can see that list, like I'll just, I'll make links for all the books. And it's, I know it's kind of annoying, but if you have a, a list of links to these books, then you can just click on them, right? And add them to the cart. Cause, cause the thing is, I think it, that's true. Um, Word and Bird Nerd, because I have to make a link for every book. So I'm pretty sure that you have to use that link. And what we're talking about, if you're, if you don't know is, I'm part of the Abe Books affiliate program now, which is fun because I'm always talking about books to buy and they're all out of print, always. So we use Abe Books. That's the other thing. I don't want to use Amazon. I don't want to use YouTube, so I use Twitch. Don't want to use Amazon, so we use Abe Books. Don't want to use iPhone, so I have a Google Pixel phone. So, so if somebody can send me the, oh, okay, Raffle Waffle, awesome. Um, I will, I will text or I will um, discord raffle waffle and get that list and then make, make the links. I mean, it's easy, but I have to do it through my thing, you know? So, so if I get that done, then I can just post that, share that. Um, it just won't be a problem. And thank you for even caring about that. I mean, it's pretty cool. So, um, earrings, Ooh, merch idea, miscellany. Serpinski triangle dangly earrings. Hmm. You know, there, if you even look, if you look online at Serpinski triangle earrings, you will find them. And they're great. They absolutely look like quilt blocks or triangle ones. Um, so, okay. So, oh, I know, I know. Abe is a subsidiary of Amazon. Well, guess what? You know what? Twitch is too. Am Amazon totally bought uh, Twitch 
some years ago. And so, you know, it's all Amazon now, you know, we're all, we're all, it's their world, you know, we're just living in it, but somehow it just feels like rebellious to not go through Amazon directly. I don't know. It just, I just can't do it. Um, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're through independent sellers. I mean, when you buy a book through eight books and Amazon, right. And it's used, you're getting it through an independent seller. Thank God. Um, so everybody, thank you so, so much. Um, I love doing the show. I I'm so glad that you're here. I know the times in March are different, but you know, I think we had a pretty good crowd today. So, um, so yeah, I mean, thanks for being here and who knows what will happen when you start going down the rabbit hole of the quilt universe, you know, um, glass math. It's crazy. It's crazy. Donate to however you want to help. If you want to help the people of Ukraine, it is crazy. I just, we can't even, I mean, I don't even know what to say. Just hang in there and help how, how you can. And yeah, stay strong, you know. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday at 11 a.m. Central. And anybody watching the replay, to all my subscribers, to the mods, to the peeps, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love doing this. And you are you have to be here or it doesn't happen. So thanks. Bye, everybody. Um, take care and be good, but not too good. Okay, bye.